welcome back. Those were the words of the Director General of the World Health Organization. Now it follows that COVID-19 is no longer a global emergency after the World Health Organization ended the global emergency status of the pandemic last week. Declaration by the WHO does not necessarily mean that COVID-19 is over, but that the virus is now categorized as any other disease or virus as it still remains a significant public health challenge. With more on this, we now speak to the Minister of Health and Social Services, none other than Dr. Kalumbi Shangula. Good morning, Doc, and welcome back to Good Morning Namibia. Good morning, and good morning, Namibians. It's great to have you back. How are you doing on this gift of a Tuesday morning? No, I'm doing very well, and I can uh, assure the nation that uh, I'm, I'm not having a bad news this time. Very well. I'm sure the nation is equally delighted, Doctor. You have been at the helm of the country's fight against COVID-19, holding space for the entire nation over more than two years. From where you stand, Doctor, are you convinced with the conviction of the World Health Organization that COVID-19 is no longer a big public health threat? Thank you very much. Maybe before I come to your question, let me put this issue in more perspective. We may recall that uh, on the 30th of January 2022, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a public health emergency of international concern. Now, what does that mean? For a disease to be classified as such, it means that it must be an extraordinary event that is sudden, that is unexpected, and that has got the potential to spread to other states. And that would require international coordination and collaborations in order to contain it. Just one moment, Doctor. I just want to make sure that I heard you correctly. You said 2022 as opposed to 2020. No, it's on the 30th of January 2020. Yes. If I said 2022, I apologize. No problem. Yeah. So that is the characteristic of COVID-19 as it evolved. Mm. Now, as we heard from the Director General of WHO, the International Health Regulation Emergency Committee met on the 4th of May and considered all the data pertaining to COVID-19 mm. and made a recommendation to declare that COVID-19 is no longer a public health emergency of international uh, concern. What were the basis for that? The basis for that is that there has been a decline, overall decline in the world in hospitalization, ICU admissions, and also that there has been a high level of population immunity. As you may recall that um, at the beginning of the pandemic, somewhere when the vac vaccines were discovered, many countries in the developed world, they went on a vaccination drive and they have attained more than 70% uh, vaccination coverage. So there has been a quite high population immunity as a result of the vaccination drive. Now, again, uh, COVID-19 has now assumed uh, the characteristic of an established disease. In other words, it is established in communities and it is ongoing disease. It's no longer, um, it's not being interrupted. It's, and therefore, on that basis, the International Health Regulation Emergency Committee recommended to, to the Director General to declare COVID-19 as no longer a public health emergency of international concern. Mm. But before we came to that status, I can just give a few uh, statistics that up to now, I mean, a week ago, by, by that time when the declaration was made, 765 million people have been inf af affect infected with COVID-19. And out of that, 6.9 6 million 
people have died mm. as, a, as, as a result of that, as a direct result of COVID-19. Now, coming now to the status now, it is clear, as the Director General have said, that it does not mean that COVID-19 has disappeared. It still remains a public health issue, and we must continue to manage it the way we manage other diseases. Thank you, Doctor. Two points that one needs to highlight from what the Director General of the WHO did say is that at the moment, someone still dies every three minutes because of COVID-19, number one. And he said, number two, that the worst thing that any country can do right now is to let its guard down. What do you make of those two sentiments? It's a very, very important statement. It underlined the fact that COVID-19 has not disappeared and it's still a problem. And we also, I must also say that even here in Namibia, we do still register cases of COVID-19. There is a danger, as the Director General have said, of COVID-19 fatigue, because we also witness that even here in Namibia, people would be surprised to hear the uh, case of COVID-19. They would say, oh, do we still have COVID-19? Mm. We have forgotten about the dark days Ex of June, July, and August 2021, Doctor, exactly. when the very deadly Delta variant Ex was in our midst. Exactly. Speaking of which, and I'm happy you're raising our, our own situation from the figures that I had access to, it would appear that we ha had about 54 recorded cases over the past four weeks mm -hmm. and five hospitalizations from what I understand, no ICU admissions and no deaths recorded. Is that information at my disposal, disposal correct? We gather, we gather information on a weekly basis. We compile them on a weekly basis, but we gather the information on a daily basis. Mm. So every day we know exactly how many cases have been recorded. On the average, we record between one and three cases of COVID-19 per day in Namibia. Mm. So very rare you find that in day there is a zero return. It's always either one, two or three cases per day. And during the period of one week, the latest figure, we had uh, a number of uh, 47 active cases. So which underlines the fact that there is still active infection transmission going on. Someone asked yesterday on social media, Doc, in the event that one tests positive for COVID-19 at this point in time, what are the protocols in terms of how long you have to isolate before you can be reintegrated into society? Well, um, the, we have not suspended the protocol, although from the 15th of July 2022, we have uh, uh, removed all the uh, restrictions, all the regulations, but the protocol will still remain the same. If you feel that you might have contracted COVID-19, the best thing is to isolate yourself. Mm. But make sure that you also have access to testing facility so that you confirm that it is indeed uh, COVID-19. Uh, we have, uh, then you must seek uh, medical attention it might be that you might need to be hospitalized, uh, and especially for people with no immunity, those who have not uh, had episodes of COVID-19 before, and those who have not been vaccinated. It's much best to get to the health facility. Thank you, Doc. To determine how you would manage the positivity going forward. Speaking about vaccinations, despite the strides made in that regard, in the developed world. We do know that our uptake was poor. How are we faring in that regard at the moment? Well, we, we are still continuing with our vaccination drive. Uh, and I, I must say that it's not really satisfactory. At the, at the present moment, we have about more than half a million people who have been fully vaccinated, which translate in about 28.5% of the target population. This is far, far be below the expected target for a country to, uh, to, 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 to attain herd immunity. And therefore, we have not uh, stopped our vaccination drive. 
we are still continuing. And one thing which I may explain, uh, what I need to explain is that it's better for you to get vaccinated before you get attacked. Mm. Because even if you are not vaccinated, the likelihood is that you may end up in the being hospitalized and you may end up in the ICU. Or in the mortuary, or unfortunately. In the mo unfortunately, in the mortuary. Yeah. Um, doctor, as far as booster shots are concerned, um, are second boosters on the cards? No, at the time, uh, for the time being, the second booster is not on the card. But we have all the vaccines for anybody who would like to get vaccinated. We still feel that with the, with the, with the, with the second dose, depending on the antigen one chooses and the booster one is safely protected and even if one is infected the likelihood of big hospitalization is minimal doc any parting thoughts this moment before we let you go to the namibian nation yes uh, i just want to to state that uh, uh, we are still having covid 19 cases there is still active transmission going on in the country, although at a very low level. But we must not uh, uh, get into temptation of COVID-19 fatigue. Let us be reminded at all time and that wherever, however we conduct ourselves, whether socially or in private, that COVID-19 is still with us. And we have taught and have assume very good practice during COVID-19. We must continue with those. Personal hygiene, washing of hands, those things which may mean uh, simple, but they mean a lot in terms of COVID-19 mm. control and prevention. Doctor, on my own behalf and on behalf of the Namibian Nation, Tapandula Unene. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, it was a pleasure. There you have it, Dr. Kalumbi Shangula, the Minister of Health and Social Services, talking to us about what the COVID-19 picture looks like in this country on this 9th day of May 2023. According to the Director General of the World Health Organization, the last thing any country should do at this moment is to let its guard down. Every three minutes, someone still dies of COVID-19, and close to 7 million people across the globe perished as a result of the virus.